Welcome back to My Car Shop. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to calculate carburetor size for your engine. I'm Mike, and this is My Car Shop. Working out of a 100-year-old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. As a former fuel system engineer working in the auto industry, one of the things that I see is people being very confused about how to spec uh, carburetor size, injector size, fuel pumps, and things like that. And so, being as my car shop is mostly old school, we're not really going to get into fuel injection, although some of the principles obviously will apply. Um, but what we're really going to spend some time talking about over time is uh, how to spec, how to spec um, the proper fuel system for your engine. So we're going to start with how to calculate carburetor size. One of the things that happens a lot is guys put carburetors on their engines that are just way too big. And there's a number of factors that come into play. So we want to talk about this formula where CFM equals cubic inches times RPM times volumet volumetric efficiency. There's big words and there's maths, so you're going to want to pay attention. Volumetric efficiency divided by 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, one of the first things we want to talk about is what in the heck is 3456. It's just a random number? No, it's actually not. One of the things that drives me crazy is people not understanding how to calculate things properly. And then when they do have a formula, nobody has explained to them what the numbers mean. So we want to talk about 3456, first of all. So if we look at how many cubic inches there are in a cubic foot, there are 1,728 cubic inches, let's just do inches cubed, in a cubic foot. Now we also need to know how many revolutions there are in a power cycle on a four-stroke engine, which is two. So we take 1728, which is how many cubic inches there are in a cubic foot, and we multiply that times two, so we know that there are 3,456 cubic inches in one power stroke, excuse me, yeah, in one power cycle of a four stroke engine. So that's where this number comes from. So if we're gonna calculate how many cubic feet per minute are required, we need to know how many cubic inches there are in a cubic foot. So we, we are literally looking at in one cubic foot of air, there are 1,728 cubic inches, and there are in in the revolutions of a power stroke of the engine, we have to multiply that times two, and that gives us this number. So that's the baseline that we use to calculate um, the formula here in determining CFM. Well, I shouldn't have done that dividing line under there, I apologize. So we're gonna calculate carb size. A couple things about carburetor size. As is typical, guys think they need more carburetor than they actually need. Um, it's, it's such a common mistake to put too large of a carburetor on your engine. The car will run okay. Uh, you may soot up your plugs, you may not. It depends whether it's a mechanical secondary or a vacuum secondary. Um, but the tendency is to over carburate an engine. You'd be surprised, really, how little carburetor you need to make a car perform really well. So, for example, uh, one of the common carburetor sizes, and it's the one that I used off the 47 Ford here in the intro of the show, is a Holly 01850 CFM vacuum secondary carb. Another one that guys always like to run is a 650 double pumper uh, Holly carburetor, and I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Um, vastly different worlds here, and we'll talk briefly about why that is. Um, so we want to look at how to calculate is this a better carburetor for your engine or is this a better carburetor? Uh, and it's all going to depend upon application, uh, whether it's a race car or a street car. And of course, every guy out there thinks that his car is a race car and they're not. Uh, 
And it's all based upon determining this, the type of carburetor has to do with how high RPM your stall is, uh, whether you're running a stick or a manual, etc., etc. So in other words, how quickly that engine can get to that optimum number uh, in that carburetor and drink down that fuel and air quickly to get those RPMs up. Um, and that, that up to a large degree has to do with this here, which is volumetric efficiency. So for a stock engine, uh, we're looking at generally about 80% volumetric efficiency. So the number we're going to use there is 80%. If we're looking at a bone stock engine for a street engine that's got bio performance options, it's going to be 80 to 85%. Um, for an engine that is maybe more towards a real race engine, we could get up around 90 to 100% volumetric efficiency. So let's explain real quickly what volumetric efficiency is. It's basically the displacement of that cylinder and whether or not it's drawing in that volume of air with every intake stroke. So if let's say, I'm just gonna make up a number, I haven't taken time to think about this at all, but uh, let's say that our cylinder can handle two cubic feet of air. That's way too much, but point is, um, that's what it's capable of handling without being compressed. Compressing that would be forced induction. We're not talking about that here. Uh, if that engine is so efficient that it can bring in two cubic feet of air with every intake stroke, then that would be a 100% volumetric efficiency. Very few engines are that good. You may even get a race engine that could possibly do a little more than that, but that's pretty unrealistic. Everything would have to be optimal. Now, in forced induction, that all goes out the window because you're forcing that air in, and that's what boost does either through turbo or through supercharging, and you are getting a volumetric efficiency that is over 100%. What that number is is another subject for another time. We're going to stick with what most guys are at, which is 85%. So it's not a bone stock engine. It's got a mild cam, some headers, a four-barrel intake, uh, four barrel carburetor, etc. So we'll use 85% for our calculation. So I think we've laid out pretty clearly what these factors are. Obviously RPM is the maximum RPM that your engine can achieve. Uh, it has a lot to do with cam profile, where the, where the power peak is in your cam. So, so we're going to probably pick uh, a number that's pretty realistic for the street of like 6,500 RPM. Uh, that's a lot of RPM. Um, but, and then of course cubic inch is going to be the cubic inch displacement of your engine. So if it's a 318 Mopar or a 350 Chevy or a 302 Ford or 454 or 426 Hemi or etc. etc. And that will give us how much it's physically possible. This number is, it's only what that engine can physically handle in cubic feet per minute. And anything beyond that is actually a waste and will start to degrade performance. So in the case here, we're using 350 cubic inches, and I'm not necessarily referring to a Chevrolet motor. I'm just picking a number that's common. It could be a 360 Mopar. It could be a 350 Chevy, a 351 Ford. It's all in the ballpark. So I just use 350 as a good base number. 6,500 RPM, which is screaming for RPM, times 85% percent volumetric efficiency in other words we've got an aluminum intake maybe it's pork match to the heads uh, it's got a set of headers etc and we want to determine what size carburetor we should buy and then after we calculate this we're going to look at a couple of other things to determine whether or not we should use a vacuum secondary or a double pumper so we'll divide all of this by three four five six and that will give us our cubic feet per minute so let's get the calculator because i can't do this in my head i'm not that smart I just did this three times and the math kept coming out wrong and I couldn't figure out why. It's because I'm using my cell phone and for some reason this thing is double glitching on numbers. So 350 times 6500 times 0.85, okay, equals 1,933,750 divided by 3456 equals 559.53 CFM, so 560 CFM is our number here, and that's, that's accurate. Now, if we increased our volumetric efficiency number, and let's say our engine, we're convinced that our engine is more like 95%. Let's see how big of a difference that makes. Hopefully this turns out this time. Okay. 
three five zero times six five zero zero times something's wrong three it's I think it's holding over stuff from the previous calculation three five zero times six five zero zero times point nine five equals two million one hundred sixty one thousand two hundred and fifty and we'll divide that by Three, four, five, six equals 625 CFM. Here's my point and why I changed this number from our 85 to 95. How much difference did it make in the, number, in the amount of CFM that we have? 65 cubic feet per minute. How much is that? Not much. So let's say we go ahead and we run a 600 CFM carb on this thing. That's probably going to be about right, which is one of the reasons why the 600 Holly vacuum secondary is such a popular carburetor. Uh, but let's say that we decide we're going to go push the envelope and we're going to run a 650 on it. Vacuum secondary. Okay, that's fine. It's a little overcarbed. You're probably over, overthinking how efficient you're. Oh, my engine's got to be 100%. I promise you, it's not. <laughs> it's in this 85, probably 90% range if you're lucky, especially if it's just a street engine. Uh, well, I get some ram air effect when I'm going down the road. Yeah, maybe you're going to give yourself a little bit more, but we're not talking about a 671 blower here pushing 14 pounds of boost. So get over yourself on that one. Well, if you ran the 650 vacuum secondary carburetor on an engine that's requiring 560 CFM, is that going to be a problem? No, not as long as you have tuned your vacuum secondary properly. You would, you would not want that vacuum secondary coming in too soon because it would start taking ET off of your car, taking some horsepower down uh, by the seat of the pants. You may not notice it. Um, it may even feel a little faster to you, but if you actually ran it down the quarter mile, you would find you're probably losing a tenth or two in your time uh, over, you know, what, what you would run if you ran a smaller carburetor. So what I would run in this case with the 350, uh, I would probably run this 600 vacuum secondary carburetor. Now, vacuum versus mechanical. Let's talk about that a second. If I had a stick so I could get those RPMs up quick, I would probably run a mechanical secondary. If I had a high stall converter, I would probably go ahead and run a mechanical secondary. Everything I have here, including my GTS, I've done all the math on calculating gear ratio, on calculating torque converter that I want that matches the cam, that also stays under the cruising RPM so I'm not heating up transmission fluid when I'm driving it down the street, etc., etc., etc. I'm running a couple of 600 CFM carbs on that thing. Now I got a really big cam in that car. I'm running nitrous oxide, um, but, the, but my secondaries are tuned perfectly so that it does not flood out and I don't soot the plugs and so forth. So even though the, it's way over carbureted by the numbers, the carburetors are tuned so that uh, I'm getting the number, the, the CFM that I need to be able to run that car in its peak power band and not over fuel. I, I could easily, I could just as easily run a pair of 450s on that car, um, vacuum secondary carbs, and just have the secondaries opening a whole lot more. So remember, just because you have it all doesn't mean you should use it all. So being a guy, like all guys are, we tend to think that we have more than we do, and that our car is different than everybody else's, and that the math is crap, and you just put a big carburetor on there, because I'm going to turn a lot more RPM, so we're thinking that we're going to run 8,000 RPM. But let's do the math. We're going to do a 90, my engine's 95% or 100%, and I'm, I'm going to run 8,000 8, uh, RPM on the street. Okay, if you think so. Let's see what that does to our numbers. So we've got a 350 engine times 8,000 RPM times 0.95 divided by 3, 4, 5, 6 equals 1,000,000. CFM. 
What would I run on that if I was going to turn 8,000 RPM? Who the heck is going to build an engine to run on the street that's going to turn 8,000 RPM? I don't know, but I would probably run a 750. If it was a automatic for a street car, I would probably run a vacuum secondary 750. I might be able to get away with running, uh, if it has a high stall or a stick, a uh, double pumper. Um, but it would have to be tuned properly in order to absorb that and it would you know, and you would want to use this carburetor 100%. So would I want to go to a bigger carb? I personally wouldn't. I'd rather be a little under carb than over carb. And because uh, I'm, I'm sure that even though if I'm hitting 8,000 RPM, I'm really risk, realistically not going to be at a 95% volumetric efficiency. These numbers go out the window when you're running nitrous, when you're running a supercharger, when you're running a turbocharger and things like that. But I just wanted to cover some of the basics here. Um, it's about getting your engine to optimum efficiency to get maximum performance and almost always guys are bolting carburetors on that are way bigger than they need. So if we go back to our original numbers, a, a, a pretty mild 350 Chevy, uh, 6500 RPM with a volumetric efficiency of about 85%, you only need 560 CFM. Numbers don't lie, do the math. There are online calculators. That can do this for you but I like to show you what's behind the scenes on it how you can calculate this yourself it's very very simple it's not hard and do I use the online calculators sure but I also know some of these numbers and what's a realistic number so if I use an online calculator for a 350 at 6500 rpm with an 85 percent volumetric efficiency and it's telling me i need a 700 cfm carburetor something is wrong because i've done the math and i'm familiar with the numbers i also am familiar with engines uh built a lot of engines used to work in dyno cells and i'm very familiar with airflow i mean if you think about it all an engine is is a big air pump that's all it is it can mechanically physically only pump so much air you can do whatever you want and try to fool yourself into thinking it needs more than it does, but it's just an air pump and it's only physically capable of so much. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, drop them down there in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I really want to take the mystery out of this stuff. And as some of you have said, it's starting to make math fun. You're thinking about what you have. You're calculating uh, some of those things. Um, numbers don't lie. You know, um, well, I know in the real world this will work and that'll work. Yeah, it probably does work and works pretty well, but that doesn't mean it's working as efficiently as it should. So I know everybody says size matters, but when it comes down to fuel systems, when it comes down to carburetors, particularly smaller can actually be better. That's going to do it for this episode of My Car Shop. As I said, I hope you found this helpful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Hit that bell so you receive notifications. We are on Facebook and Instagram, forward slash My Car Shop. And as we always say around the shop here, rock!